Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to continue our mini series that we've been doing on the when should I use concept. Uh, we've covered uh, Critter, we've covered GIMP, we've covered Paint.net. I wanted to get to a brand new thing. Well, not so much brand new in that we haven't seen it before. This is Dark Table. Some very interesting things and use cases that we can drill into today. Let's get to it. All right, so once again, my name is Nate. This is Photo Learningism, and I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technology. Sometimes we'll compare them, sometimes we'll highlight them so you can find the most value in the tools that are available to you for your art exploration. So thank you for joining in. I'm so glad that you're here. I've touched on this before in kind of a comparison sort of feature at type of thing, um, but I wanted to cover Dark Table as the when should I use approach when is it most appropriate? Um, you may look at this and may have seen it or first of all think, well, what, what is Darktable? <laughs> Again, there are videos. I invite you to go watch those uh, to get a better sense of it. Ultimately, it is a, a tonal tool. It is a photo enhancement tool. And that is different from a photo editing tool. The difference is that you are working with the tones and colors and exposure and adjusting all those things. This is not alteration. This is not so much the concept of I don't like this tree branch or I don't like uh, this person's expression or I you know, want to completely reshape how the image looks. That's not what this is for. This is for taking the image, okay, I really want to pull out these colors. I really want to pull out this contrast. I really want to highlight the shadows or draw back the shadows. I really want to draw in the sunlight or push back the sunlight. I want the sky to pop. I want the sky to withdraw. Those are the kinds of things that you can do in this dark table tool. Now, for right now I'm using version 3.0.0. There's probably a more current version, but this is the one I have. Um, I first started out loading dark table as a raw loader for GIMP. Uh, GIMP relies on third-party uh, raw loaders to, to bring that format into its editing interface, but it is also a standalone tool that works very well for this idea of photo enhancement. And there's a lot of different modules here. I can't really jump through them all, but what I can show you are just some of the capabilities of, I mentioned just in that little brief introduction about the, the shadows and highlights. You have a lot of control to pull around and either stick them out or, or enhance them and play with all those different things and the scope of it and the depth of it and that's really pretty standard for all the different models that you will see again there's a whole long list of things that you can do for this i think the ones that i'm finding uh the least the easiest to dig into and to do what i do as a photographer would be playing with the exposure playing with the contrast and brightness shadows and highlights and there's a few other things here along the way um Retouching is more of a masking thing, which I won't get into too much of that because that's kind of bridging outside the scope of what the tool is really for. That does give you some capability to do some basic masking, whether you want to add kind of a blur strip or a blur shape, or if you want to do what's called a healing concept or, or kind of pseudo cloning to kind of blend over something that you would want to be a little cleaner or smoother. It can do that, but again, it's not so much getting into the alteration phase. These are strictly like enhancement type things um, so you can be aware that they're there and they can add some value to that uh, i'm using the monochrome piece right now which works very well alongside vibrance what those do is again different aspects of what i was just discussing about okay well we're going to dip into the saturation the color range we're going to look at the um, ability to you know, pull out the black and white tones, which I really love doing. That's one of my favorite things to, to look at a picture and imagine. Um, so this does give you much more control than you would find in Krita, than you would find in Paint.net, than you would find in GIMP. Reason being, again, is that those tools I just mentioned, those are geared towards drawing and painting from scratch or altering things to a great degree and working with them in high detail. This is a completely different approach this this is you're taking a piece of work and you're going to pull in or out of it what you have to work with you're not so much going to be adding to it and altering it does that make sense hope so <laughs> so keep that mindset in mind this is photo enhancement also as you start to explore this you'll see as i found that the interface 
of this type of tool. And there's another one that we'll cover in a future video called Raw Therapy. But the interfaces are just built so much better around that concept, around photo enhancement. Um, you don't need sub windows to modify some of these properties. Because you might say, well, well, Nate, I know that there's tonal curves and things that I can find in Krita or in GIMP and get a little bit more enhancement out of that. You can, yes, not to this degree, but you can get some of that. And also every time you need to use those controls, there's an annoying pop-up window that has to pop up in front of something. And you can only work with one at a time that way also. This way you can work with any number of these as you go back and forth working on them and make adjustments without having to overload these windows on top of what you're doing and you can keep your workspace that much cleaner and also you can just be that much more efficient. It's The layout is designed so that you can be working on this without a whole lot of, of um, distraction, so to speak. So that's why I believe it lends more credence towards the enhancement tool again versus the editing tool. So. Darktable, um, it does accept raw formats, obviously, because it works as a, a raw loader for other things. But I'm working with Nikon images, NEFs, right now. There was absolutely no trouble pulling that in right out of the box. Um, and I've, I've, again, load times have been short. It is not buggy or laggy. It is very stable. And it has a very dedicated community behind this tool as well to bring you enhancements and bump fixes as they're identified. So. This is not a once and done tool. It's constantly being evolved and enhanced and it's more stuff to look forward to, more modules. And I do understand there's more you can add into this as well to make the experience that much more thorough. So check it out, Darktable. I'll put a link in the description below. I do hope that's helpful. Please do go check out the other videos so you can get a little bit more historical context on how this tool can measure up and what it can do for you in other contexts. Um, this is Photo Learningism. I really appreciate you taking the time to make it this far in the video and stay with me. Please do join the conversation, leave a comment, share your experience with this tool or similar tools so we can all benefit from knowing what's out there and what's what's the best, right? Um, I would really appreciate a thumbs up if this was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I do hope to see you in the future. Take care.